Y'all, it's trash day. I don't know if you can hear it in the background. I am going to lose my mind. <laughs> <laughs> this table is 400 pieces. I counted twice. It turned out absolutely great. Like I'm so proud of it. In this space, it looks awesome. But before we just dive right in, let me first explain that this is my wife. She loves to organize. But in this latest layout change, it suddenly left us one table short. Quick and dirty, super easy project. Run to the store, grab some wood. The table that I want, I want it thick and fairly large, 60 inches by 30 inches. As I'm calculating everything out, this is way over budget. What if I made the guts of the tabletop out of two by fours? Just straight from Home Depot, super cheap. So for science and budget and just for trying something new, we're gonna fake it. And then once the guts of the table are complete, I could then skin the top of it. Step one, make these two by fours, machine them down to the exact size that I need. And my very loose plan is to basically assemble a gigantic two by four cutting board. Unfortunately, my four messy clamps, they max out at 24 inches and the table is well beyond that. So I find out that if I decouple one of the heads, I can actually still use the bones of it as the foundation to build on. And after scouring my house, I only have two clamps just two that exceed 30 inches. The amount of complicated MacGyver misery caused by not going to the store and buying more clamps, brutal. Two straight edge guides, one random hatchet for frames, I guess, two long clamps, eight paint cans, and one fluffy cat who's here somewhere. After a day and a half or so of cure time, it's ready to sand and I'm blown away by how flat I've managed to make this thing considering just how chaotic and random the glue up was. I scour the entire house looking for every single piece of scrap, pieces that were just too weird shaped after pull cue cuts to use. I see some purple heart, I see some paduk, I see some curly maple, some soft maple. I start slicing everything up, super cool. So while tabletop is curing and clamped, I start cutting all the plywood pieces for the legs and apron. The chevron pattern, this is all plywood. My plan is to emulate this, sort of. The same idea, take a big piece of plywood and chop it into thin strips and then glue it up and make really fun patterns. So after assessing what angle would look good, like a 45 degree angle, I start making just templates on parchment paper, right? Something that I can lay and then build and glue on. Remember at the very beginning of the video, I mentioned that it was 400 pieces. This is the bulk of those 400 pieces. It is so monotonous. And finally, after the fourth leg is complete, I can switch to the exact same thing that I've been doing for the last three days. So now I start working on the short apron and the long apron. I made this jig explicitly for this project and it ended up being like my favorite thing ever. It works perfectly and it allows me to essentially cut any angle I could imagine. With all of the different angles used, start laying everything out on the garage floor just so I can assess from a bird's eye view what's happening. So with these pieces laid out where they should be, I start thinking about the slope design with the long apron. So I take it inside and I start measuring all the contours out. These curves are going to be hand cut on a bandsaw. I set up the camera, I had a great angle of the bandsaw for this sloped cut and I didn't press record. Awesome. Just visualized me cutting the slope, turned out great. Anyway, after that, it's time to just make everything plain down and cohesive. I start noting that there's this very slight hump right in the middle of the long apron. I strap it down and I start sanding it down to size. I've always loved the look of a rounded edge on plywood glue ups. So I think that this is a half inch. I just go all the way down both sides. So next up is hardware. For the short aprons, we're gonna be using threaded inserts for nuts and bolts. 
And then for the long apron, we're gonna be using pocket hole screws. This pocket hole jig made by Craig is worth every penny. It's super easy to use, it's consistent. Yeah, I would definitely recommend purchasing it. This thing is deceptively heavy and it's right around here where I start regretting my decision to do it solo and not go bug my wife to help. Since the threaded inserts are now in place, this is the time to see if everything was measured correctly and everything lines up. And it's good. I'm so proud. Screw hole time. Hey, more sanding. Yeah, number one on my to-do list is to get a hand plane. I know that there's a big learning curve, but man, it would have been so useful right about now. When it came time to finish, I had this old bottle of Osmo Pollux oil. I've never actually applied it this way before. I typically just take an old t-shirt. Despite my horrible technique, this is definitely the ideal way to do it. Next time I would definitely use a, a plastic card scraper and not some playing cards that kept on disintegrating. And this is the last step, finally. And it's funny how it was supposed to be a two day project, but it was, I don't know, two weeks? So yeah, that was my first table build and I've never been happier with my office. One week update on the new table. I'm still in love with it. It's just doing everything a table should. Ugh. It looks so good, you guys. Strider took it upon herself to fill in this space right here because it gets really good lighting. She just made it rain plants. Look at this. And they are thriving. So they even love the new table. And this window provides such a dope view. It was really a good idea moving this table here. We also have this really cool chair. No one really sits here. It's mainly for Mew Mew. She totally sits there. We decided that this is a perfect spot for her bed that she never uses. I don't know, I made it like six months ago or so. Not once. She still absolutely hates this bed and I do not know why. I think that's one of the best parts about custom tables is that I can make the dimensions literally anything I want. This is completely spec'd out perfect to my particular needs. It fits both of my monitors perfectly. It fits all of my Izzy's game time stuff. And also me and the Beebs have started accumulating this really cool collection of quartz. We go walking around our neighborhood. There's some trails. We find rocks. We smash them open with a chisel and hammer. It's amazing. It's a lot of fun actually. Although I must say I was kind of bummed about this one because dude, it's all rock. Look at it, it is hollow inside, but dude, it's all rock. I think the only thing I need to do with this table is just cover these guys up. I can easily make some dowels. I've just been busy, haven't gotten a chance to do it yet. Let me just sit down real quick and show you my view. Never mind the open door, we're doing some maintenance in there. But check this out, I have this awesome reef tank view. And then over here on this side, we have nice plants, greenery. It's amazing. Guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. It was a lot of fun making this table. Uh, Please hit subscribe, we'd really, really appreciate it, and we'll see you guys soon.